of course, time to talk with the folks from Woodlawn Hospital. This is a gentleman who started his career at a college radio station and ends up as the president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. And that's Mr. John Alley. And all the reason I bring that up is because there's hope for me yet. There's hope for you yet. Uh, <laughs> it was determined very quickly in that college radio that after about a week that I was not wanted there any much longer. So that was a very, very short on-campus uh, career. Well, look what it's led to. Look, we yeah. <laughs> finally found something I can do. There you go. <laughs> Trustees were in session yesterday. Yeah, at our board Woodland meeting Hospital. yesterday. Uh, again, early in the year, not a lot going on. Still trying to, you know, dust off everything from the winter and get ready for the spring. A couple of things that uh, you know, we wanted to update the board on was for those folks in our Argus market, uh, phone has been an issue up there, uh, especially on Mondays with the volume of calls coming in. So we identified we had some minor equipment issues. We had some minor process issues. So been working on that and uh, got a report from Dr. Hayes who came to the board meeting and said, things are better. So, you know, it just, I think, took us a while to figure out how to handle the vast number of calls that come in first thing in the morning on Mondays. So it, it is better. Uh, it's not perfect yet. We're still working on that. But you, the folks who have been uh, calling complaining, I can't get through. Hopefully you're seeing a little bit of improvement in that and uh, the staff change the process, how they handle that first thing in the morning. And again, some equipment tweaks that helps them do their job better. So we're, we're seeing better response time for the folks up in Argus now on that phone system. So, John, you don't think about that, but that's critically important to people, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it was one of those things, what, what's the fix? And, you know, we identify one thing, work on it, and it would create a problem somewhere else. So it just, it took some time. We put a whole new phone system in there. So it was a, you know, totally new system to the staff and everything. It just took a while, I think, to get all the, the tweaking done to make sure it runs good. Am I 100% satisfied? No. Uh, I think there, we can still make some improvements there, but it is far better than it was four or five months ago. I mean, we were having, you know, on a typical Monday morning, uh, they'll get eight to 900 phone calls. Wow. And we got three people trying to handle wow. that. So we just need to change the process. How That's a big do, number. That is a big number. How really it's flowing is. through yeah. the system. So uh, much better than it was and still trying to fine tune it to, to make it just really easy for the folks call in, you know, get two to three rings maybe and hope somebody at that point, We our goal is you get to talk to a person so you can get, you know, transferred to the area you need to be transferred to. So okay. working hard on that. Yeah. The other thing we kind of updated the board on yesterday is that, uh, you know, we've been kind of over the past few years uh, squirreling money away. We've got a, a renovation project. As we look at our inpatient rooms, they're the original rooms when the hospital was built. Back then, they were absolutely, you know, state-of-the-art efficient rooms. Now, they're not. Technology has changed. The equipment that we need to bring in for a patient when they're in the hospital now, they're much sicker now than they were before. So the room's not efficient. Um, we can't make the rooms bigger, but we can change the layout. Four or five years ago, we had a, a firm come in and kind of work with us a little bit, say, okay, here's what we think you need to do. Uh, give us a number. And, you know, after we got the hearts going back again after getting that number, said, it's going to have to wait a while. But uh, yesterday, we kind of discussed that we're probably going to start that process again. And uh, I contacted the architect yesterday. said, hey, do you still have that file? Dust it off. Let's relook at this as we're looking to okay. mid-2019, late-2019, maybe start that renovation. And it's probably going to be a minimum of a two-year project because I can't take all the rooms out of service you to do the renovation. Right. So right. we'll be doing them probably in blocks of twos and threes, get rooms done, move to the next group. Probably the biggest area you want to do on the, the, the uh, be the east end of the med surge unit. There's four rooms along that wall. We'd like to change those, or excuse me, there's six rooms. We'd like to change those to four and make that our orthopedic rooms because those patients have far more equipment in their room than a, a other person. Exactly. So by making the rooms a little bigger, we can get more equipment in there. So that's going to be probably the, the hardest ones, I think, uh, to, you know, as far as renovation of actually taking walls down, putting new ones in. The other ones is just reconfiguring them. So uh, putting in new heating in, systems in the rooms, new lighting, r r definitely redo the bathrooms. The, again, they're, they're fairly old. And uh, we assume back years ago, people were much shorter than they are now because the, uh, the, the stools are really close to the, <laughs> close to the floor. And it's difficult for folks, if they've had abdominal surgeries right. or some orthopedic procedures, to get up and down. So we want to make sure that those are a little higher, a little more accommodating. Okay. So uh, looking forward to kind of getting that dusted off and start looking at it again. Hopefully late, uh, mid to late 2019, 
get that process started in, in a couple years and have it all done. But, you know, it's just uh, the rooms are nice. They, when they were built, it was state-of-the-art. We were one of the few hospitals in the state had all private rooms. You know, and everybody's kind of, I say, they, they followed our suit because as you look now, more and more are going to all private rooms. So anxious to get that going. I know the staff would like to see a little more efficiencies built into the room and uh, makes it their job a little easier. Overall, how is the HVAC system at Woodlawn? In the, the general building itself is very good. Okay. Uh, the issue was when they built the inpatient rooms, each room has its own unit. That causes problems because now we got 25 different units to maintain. Um, hard to find parts for them. So what we're wanting to do is basically generate them off of one source and then have either what's called reheat boxes in them so that each room can control its temperature based on that reheat heat box by turning it up or down. Cooling can come all that same way from one system. So we maintain one system instead of 25. Okay. So I think it's going to be much easier on our maintenance guys, too, trying to do that. And I know now they, they struggle try to keep those going just because of the age of them. There's just, uh, you know, they're end of their life breaking down it's hard to keep a mechanical thing running for that many years so Absolutely. Uh, i think everybody's anxious to get that started uh, side note you hate to get it started because it's gonna be a mess it's gonna be disruptive <laughs> sure it is uh, we know it's going to be but uh, you know look long term it's gonna be a benefit to the to the community and to the hospital still stay with the concept of private rooms though. absolutely okay we'll, we'll stay private rooms just update them a little bit uh like I say, change configuration around so it's more efficient for both patients, visitors, and staff. All right. Finally got into the financials in for February. We had uh, gross revenue about $11.5 million. Our deductions from revenue was $7.1 million. So, we're, again, we're staying right in that 60% that we write off. Had operating expenses of $4.5 million. So, we actually was able to eke out a small profit for the okay. month, about 212000 which is good. In uh, last year, we weren't... In the in the black in February, we're you know pretty deep in the red. So we've seen a little more volume this year than we had this time last year. I think it's the flu had a lot to do with that in 2018. Is that the flu vaccine in 17 was far more effective than it was this year. So uh, you know as we're looking to the rest of the year, we're, we've got a fairly good cushion now as we build into the summer months and then back into the winter months when that's usually our busy season. And uh, that was about it for the board meeting. Not a lot going on. Uh, Again, uh, looking uh, what's going to happen with some of the insurance contracts. Well, I was going to ask you about Affordable Care Act because you don't hear much out of Washington right now. It's fairly quiet. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, which is a scary thing. I, <laughs> yeah, I think I'd rather hear more rhetoric than just dead silence on Politicians that. Politicians have a tendency to talk. So. Yeah, so if they're not talking, something's going on. We just don't know what it is. And I'm not even getting input. Uh, different uh, hospital organizations and associations have, you know, the lobbyists and their representatives there. Not getting information from them either. So, you know, I think uh, it's kind of maybe died off for, for right now. Not any major big changes coming. Uh, but, you know, we're looking at uh, mergers of insurance companies. You know, there's a lot of those that the uh, rumor mills out there that, you know, X companies go to buy Y and, and vice versa. And that's going to change the delivery of health care. The other big player coming into the market right now is uh, uh, Walmart. And, and Amazon. Amazon is buying a lot of medical facilities, a lot of medical manufacturing. And there was an article uh, about a month ago, one of the electronic articles I get, Amazon is hiring a lot of the top executives out of a lot of the uh, healthcare companies. So they're, they're buying the best and the brightest. So I think at some point, we're going to see Amazon get into the, the healthcare market. And instead of us buying supplies from our normal suppliers, we might be going to Amazon, you know, for that. So that's changing the whole atmosphere of healthcare. And it's one of those, you got to look at your crystal ball and be prepared for that and anticipate what's coming. Because once you get behind the eight ball on that, you never catch up. So, you know, we're watching that very carefully. Where are these mergers going and who's buying who? Because that's going to determine the long term where we get our product from and what the price that product's going to be. Not too long ago, wasn't it CVS that announced they were buying a major insurance company? Yes, and I'm and not sure if that's finalized yet I'm not yet sure or not. it is either, but what does that do to the scope of health care? That changes that again because now, you know, the my philosophy is the fewer players you have in the game, the higher the price is going to go. Because now if I've only got one or two options to go to, they can dictate to me what my price is going to be, and I don't have any place else to go. So, you know, they're saying, well, it's more efficient for the consumer. 
that's yet to be seen. Uh, again, uh, it's like anything else. The less people who have a product, the higher that price goes. So we just, we're sitting back and watching where all that's going to go. And are we going to see a, a fairly dramatic increase in our costs? We don't know. Uh, we're still experiencing a lot of drug shortages. We still haven't recovered from the hurricane in Puerto Rico. So, you know, uh, it's getting better. And it's, we're, we're not, you know, going a day by day now. We're kind of a week to week on some of our supplies. And it's the, the things you take for granted. You know, uh, IV bags, IV solutions, which you wouldn't think, why are we so short on those? But when they come out of one area and that area is devastated by a natural disaster, it really puts a, a crimp in everybody's delivery system. So it's much better than it was. We were, you know, rationing our IV bags. Now we're a little more comfortable. It's not as, it's not up to 100% yet, but we do see, hopefully by the end of the summer, August, September, I think we should be back to full production, you know, on those drugs that were devastated by the hurricane. So that's going to help from a supply area. Also, so, you know, cost will go down because right now, you know, you can find some of this stuff, but you pay a premium for it to get it because it is in a short supply. John Alley's president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. John, are you satisfied with where Woodlawn is doctor-wise? Absolutely. I okay. think we've got a, a, a very good complement medical staff, you know, but also I've got to look five, seven, eight years out. And I've got, you know, a few of my, the physicians are starting to talk about, you know, retirement starting to look pretty good. <laughs> so, you know, what I ask, give me a three to four year notice because it's going to take that long to recruit somebody that uh, is going to fit this community and, and what we expect from our physicians. There's a lot of physicians available. Problem is, you know, the personality might not fit our, our environment. And uh, so we take time to find physicians, try to make sure they're going to fit into a, the environment that we expect here in a rural community. I've noted over the years you pick uh, doctors from not only just coming out of medical school, but some that are already established in their field. Right. And what we're finding, lots of times, some of the docs have been, you know, in a practice for numerous years. For whatever reason, that practice dissolves. All of a sudden, now they've been in the same location for 10, 15 years. They need a job. And what I found, you know, those are the, the stable physicians. They're used to being in one spot for, you know, a fixed period of time. That's the kind of physician I'm looking for that wants to come here and make this a permanent. Not, you know, a lot of physicians like the idea, I'm at two years here, I two years, they like that moving around. You know, that doesn't fit our model of what we want from our health care delivery here in, in Fulton County. So we're looking for those physicians that are looking for that permanent spot to come in and, and spend 8, 10, 12, 15 years in one spot. So it, it's, it's fun trying to do the recruiting. <laughs> and it's a constant thing, isn't it? It's constant, right. yes. You, you've always got to be looking for that physician, uh, you know, who might say, hey, I've in a couple of years, I've heard my practice is going to dissolve because I'm the youngest one in the practice, and they're just going to close it down. Are you going to have any openings? I said, yeah, definitely. Get with me. Let's see what we can do. And we're constantly looking for physicians. Um, again, i got a good complement of physicians now, but I know as we move forward in the next three to five years, six years, probably going to have two or three of them is going to tell me, I, I, I need to retire. I want to cut back. So we got to prepare now for what we see coming in five, six years down the road. Too early to predict what might be on the agenda in the April board meeting? Yeah, kind of early okay. on that. I think uh, we finalized our 2018 capital expenditure budget, which means here's what we think we want to buy during the year. So now we got to stage that. Is uh, that a big list? It's pretty. It's 1.6 million, basically. Okay. What, what we've ad the director said. Here's what I would like to buy. Some of that is, you know, I would like to buy. Some of this, I need to buy. And that, it, so we've got to rank those in that. What's first? What's second? And then how how we go pay for it? Uh, you know, my philosophy is I'd like to pay cash for it, but sometimes if it's a fairly large dollar item, then we might have to look at alternative financing, either a lease or you know some sort of long term mm -hmm. financing on that piece of equipment. So we want to stage all those. We try to not load everything in the first quarter, second. Can we spread it over the year? And then you always have that something that comes up that's not on that list. That's usually a high dollar item. So if that if we got to spend money on X, something Y has to come off that list because we want to keep that expenditure right around that 1.5, 1.6 million for 2018. That's what we've budgeted. So we want to try to hold to that to ensure that we do meet the bottom line that we hope to meet for this year. John, as we wrap this up this morning, Woodlawn's approval rating still pretty high? Still pretty high. Yeah, yeah we're looking, uh, you know, the five stars, the best rating you can get from CMS. You know, we're still, uh, you know, we want to be a five star. Everybody wants to be there. And uh, every year when we get close to it, they change the rules. So, uh, 
you know, we were there a couple of years ago. We were a five star right. facility. I think right now we're probably like a four point six, four point seven. Um, you know, so in, in my world, I I round that down. That's a four. <laughs> we we got to be a five. Uh, you know, now when I compare ourselves to other hospitals, when all the CEOs get together, we get it down. I'm a four point six three two two two. You know, who's the best that's at right. that point? Uh, but no, always got to strive to be better. And uh, you know, that's one of our common goals. We want to be a five star facility. That's what this community deserves. Can we do it? Absolutely. It takes hard work, dedication, but we can do it. And i got the staff out there that can do it. Just, we're changing the rules. Just, yeah, <laughs> or they change, yeah, let's change the rules. Uh, so I want to do that. President CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, as always, we appreciate your time. Thanks for the visit. Thanks for pe- keeping uh, the folks in Fulton County and the surrounding area well. You know, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm one person in that whole cog, and I'm a very minor person in that cog. Uh, you know, I've said it before that, you know, we got outstanding folks out there. They make my job very easy. Uh, they know what they're doing. They absolutely positively care about the community and their patients. And it shows in the quality care mm-hmm. that they give. And uh, so as long as they keep doing their job, it makes me look real good. John, thanks. Thank you.